Hey everybody, Kenny Jang here with Church Butler. Welcome to our first Facebook Live interview. Um, and I'm super excited because how fitting for this special occasion to have a special guest with us today. Uh, welcome to the show, Holly. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so honored and also feel so much pressure as being the first guest. This better be good. <laughs> so, uh, Holly, you are known across the interwebs as one of the ninja gurus of social media, but you actually sit <laughs> in an office in a larger um, firm that actually serves the church as a whole. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what your role is there and what your church, uh, what your ministry organization does for churches out there? Yeah, so I work for Vanderblumen Search Group, and we help churches and ministries with team building. So everything to do with team building from finding the right people to making sure they're in the right spots. But you're right. My role here on the greater team of we're about 33 people or so is marketing and communications for our organization. So I spend my day like you nerding out about social media and branding and content and blogging um, and video and all of that stuff that um, that you're such an expert on. So. Yeah, kind and, of nerd out about that a little bit. <laughs> and, I, and I can tell you that I'm a big fan of yours only because um, you and I have the same wall that we look at um, in the backgrounds here that we noticed. Uh, totally random. <laughs> so um, random. We didn't plan that at all. We're like a advertisement for best self journal right there. Yes. Um, <laughs> I love this planning calendar. I mean, it, it literally is one of my favorite tools for 2017. Yeah, so I just put mine up today right before this interview, which was so funny when I thought you were playing a joke on me when I opened the video. <laughs> like, Kenny, you have my calendar. <laughs> so I haven't gotten to write on it yet, but I'm really excited to have the whole year right in front of me. So, yeah. yeah. So for me, I love it because it's, it helps me be strategic. Each month is a horizontal plane, just one line each month. And so you can see progression and travel in all your projects. Um, and being strategic in church marketing in particular is really, really important, as you know. And that actually is a good segue into our topic for today. I just want to spend time with you today because um, you actually um, spent a lot of time working with church teams across the country and observing how they do their business. And in our vocation of being specialists for digital communications, um, let's talk about the topic of social media and Easter. Easter's coming up. Um, and I think all pastors and church leaders, communicators out there, know that they have to use social media in some capacity for Easter. Uh, the question is how? What do we do? And so I um, wonder if you can help us today with just one or two insights uh, from your seat. What, is, what are some effective ways to actually get people in the door for Easter services that are coming up? Yeah, I love this question because I, just like you, I'm always so excited to challenge church leaders just to try new things. You know, sometimes we can get stuck in a rut of this running the same ads or the same campaigns or posting the same thing over and over again. Um, so I, I would just love to see what people come up with as they experiment. And I think one of those things, I just talked to some church leaders uh, yesterday. Um, I was crazy enough to do a session on 50. Yes, I said 50. <laughs> social media tips for your or for your church and went through 50 ideas in 60 minutes and wow. i'm not sure that that was the best idea but hopefully they learned something um but one of those ideas was actually to be intentional about your hashtags that you use as a church so a great example of this is stevens creek church kevin lloyd is the executive pastor there um, they're in augusta georgia and they do a great job with hashtags. So one of their hashtags is people matter because that's one of the themes, one of the values of Stevens Creek. And so any picture you see that's celebrating their church uses a hashtag people matter. So thinking about Easter specifically, what are some hashtags that you could encourage your church body to use? Maybe your community group leaders, your key volunteers, um, Maybe you have some creative photos that you've created that kind of share um, the hope that we find this time of year, you know, that we have a savior that is living. How incredible is that? And so as your community is sharing those things on social media, be intentional about a hashtag that can help invite people 
into not only your church, but also celebrating the season with your church, or maybe even being introduced to the concept of Easter for the first time. Um, you know, maybe they click on that hashtag from a friend that shared a photo on social media, and then they start seeing all of this encouraging messaging um, about Easter uh, from, you know, that goes back to this church. And so um, I just think being really intentional about your hashtags is one really practical way that you can maybe spread the word a bit and get people in the doors um, on Easter I weekend. That. I love that. So be, let's drill down just for a second on hashtags. Um, do yeah. you want to be completely unique so that no one else is sharing the hashtag? Or do you want to, um, you know, jump on the bandwagon and use generic terms? Where, where do you fall on that in terms of recommendations? So personally, I think that if you're really trying to start a movement per se, or a campaign would be another way to think about that, which this is kind of a campaign, you know, we're gearing up for Easter, we're being really intentional about driving people to learn more about Easter and more about our church and inviting them into that, I would get specific because otherwise it can get really cluttered and people can get confused. And so I would find a hashtag that's unique to your church. You know, maybe it's um, FBC finds hope or, or maybe it's, um, you know, Easter at FBC or something like that. Um, that's unique to your church community that you can use as people are sharing on social media and inviting people to join them um, on Easter. That's nice. That's great. Um, and then for hashtags, is there an ideal length for the hashtag you're going to use? So I think it depends on your social medium that you're using. So on Twitter, you do need to be careful because you've only got 140 characters there. <laughs> Um, so, you know, you don't want to create a forever long hashtag that people can't even share the real message that's going to get people to click on the hashtag. Um, however, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, you know, you have a lot more room to, um, you know, to use a longer hashtag. So I do think the what's key, though, is simplicity. So is it easy to remember? Because otherwise you're going to have people sharing photos and they go, oh, I know I'm supposed to use that hashtag, but I can't right. remember it. And so then they're just uh, not going to use it. So I hate when that happens. Right. And then they start to yeah. use there's a proliferation of hashtags of different variations. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Um, do you have a, uh, any favorite tools for, um, you know, the communicator side to try to search and find all the hashtags across different networks? So um, I know Buffer and Hootsuite are great tools to kind of monitor and analyze um, hashtags. We at our team, we use HubSpot. I am, people call me Holly HubSpot. I'm a big HubSpot fan. It is a paid service. So if you're a church out there that's kind of just beginning from scratch, you know, it does cost money, but they do have an incredible tool that can help you monitor different hashtags and even mentions, um, you know, of, of uh, people's handles um, on social media. But I would say if I was just getting started, I would probably look at Buffer and Hootsuite as kind of good entry level, um, pretty intuitive tools to use. But um, but honestly, too, what I'll do a lot of times is just open Twitter and in the search bar, they have a pretty robust search bar. Ha put the hashtag in there and then make sure, though, that you look and see because it'll separate it by top and latest. And yes. so sometimes that can be tricky because sometimes it'll have some top tweets that might have not have been used in three years, but they got the most likes or retweets. Um, so make sure you click on latest to really see, you know, when that's been um, used. And this is so important, Kenny, because you don't want to use a hashtag that's unchristian. <laughs> <laughs> in the sense that there might be people out there that have already used the hashtag and maybe it had some inappropriate stuff. So do your due diligence on your hashtags. Definitely, especially if you have another live event somewhere else that is filled with not so friendly content with that same hashtag. You want to avoid that, yes, right? Absolutely. Any other large uh, things on the map for what people should be looking at, thinking about for promoting Easter on digital and social? Yeah, so you and I were just talking about how amazing Facebook Live is, you know, right before we started, right before we went live. Um, and I so agree with you. I think there's some really creative ways that churches can use videos specifically on Facebook. Um, so a couple of um, little hacks for you if you're going to use video to promote, which I think you should, to promote your Easter services. One, make sure if it is a recorded video that you add subtitles to that video. Yeah. 
Um, it's such an interesting era that we're in right now where video is king, but we're kind of going back in time to like the Charlie Chaplin era where everyone's watching videos on silent on their phones. And um, so I think it's really important that either you use text overlay on your videos or you're putting subtitles so that people can actually see what you're saying. So if a video just pops up on your feed and it's a talking head, what are you going to do? You're going to scroll right past it. Um, so make sure that you are using subtitles or text overlays. And there's even when you um, upload your video to Facebook, they even have you know subtitles where they will uh, upload it for you. Make sure you read through them and tweak them because sometimes with church jargon, Facebook doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> so make sure you edit those. And the other tip I would say when using videos is if it is a recorded video, make sure you upload it directly to Facebook. I see a yeah. lot of ministries who yes. upload their videos to Vimeo or YouTube and then they share it. But Facebook doesn't, they want all the videos on Facebook. So they're gonna show it to more people if you upload it natively to Facebook. Um, so those are just a couple of tips as you're using um, you know, videos to promote your Easter services. Make sure you do those couple things just to make sure that they, that they get in front of the people that, that you want it to. Definitely. I think those are two great starting points. The second one, I think you're, you know, we're seeing more and more video. Facebook uh, predicted that or has announced, I guess, that in five years, 95% of content on Facebook is going to be video based. So uh, I think this is the year I've declared it. This is the year of video. You have to try it out. This is a great opportunity or an excuse to get online and to try out that webcam or your mobile phone, right, to, to light up a Facebook Live uh, episode. Absolutely. And I would also say there's a great app called Boomerang. Do you use Boomerang, Kenny? Yes. yes, I love Boomerang. So fun. It's so fun. That's exactly those two words. So fun are exactly how I describe it. Um, and anytime our team posts a Boomerang on our Instagram or Facebook, people love it because it kind of just brings, you know, kind of um, makes it people feel goofy. It makes people look yeah. goofy. So I think to explain in detail what actually Boomerang is, what does it do to videos and how, you know, how do people use it? Yeah, so um, a lot of times we'll use it for uh, different celebrations on our team. So if we're doing a giveaway to our social media audience or if we're celebrating something like a holiday within our team, um, all you do, I think you might know better than me. Is it five seconds, Kenny? Uh, I don't know. what the, I, I'm not exactly sure. Vine is six seconds, so it's about that, about that amount. I think it's, it's less than 10 seconds. I think it's five to seven seconds. But um, you, you just hold it down and it captures a little video of your five seconds. So you can do a little dance and then it kind of speeds it up. So if your dance is like this, then it's going to speed it up and look like that. <laughs> so um, now there's going to be memes with me. All the I videos. love it. A manual yeah. boomerang done by Holly. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, but yeah, they're just, it they just makes your church look really fun and uh, be able to laugh. So. I think you should definitely experiment experiment with Boomerang. Instagram actually started Boomerang, so I guess Facebook owns Instagram, so it's all Facebook. Mm -hmm. But it is a separate app you have to download, um, and then yeah, you can it, upload. But it's free, it right? It's free to use, free to download. Yep, that's right. Um, and I guess that's the homework for this episode: is to go out, download the Boomerang app, try it out, try it on your personal feed, try it on your church feed. Um, there's many different ways that you can start to use it. You, the creativity will come out once you see what it actually does. Uh, and I agree with you. Every time we've actually posted boomerang uh, little video loops, um, the engagement, the likes have been much higher than your regular, ordinary, everyday text status update. Uh, Absolutely. So it's worth a try. Um, and yeah. then this is the one thing I always tell people is, you know what, worst case scenario, you can always delete that post. Always yes. delete it. Um, Which and that's, that actually reminds me. I know you only asked for two, and I've given like four. But Instagram Story, <laughs> oh yeah, um, you know, churches experiment with that as you're um, spreading the news about your Easter services. But one of the things I like about Instagram Story is that you can delete it, whereas Snapchat you're kind of stuck, or maybe they've changed that. Um, but with Instagram Story, if you accidentally post something, or maybe you didn't record your story as long as you meant to, or yep. whatever, you can yeah. always that down so go out there and experiment yes definitely great great advice great tips you got a bonus 
tip in here today for your Easter promotion, something to uh, talk about. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback and what you're learning in your social and digital realms for Easter promotions. Um, Holly, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate, appreciate you dropping by and dropping some knowledge. Well, thanks for asking me. It's, it's an honor. Um, so if someone wanted to get in touch with you or Vanderbloom, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so I would say go to vanderblumen.com, and I'm sure everybody knows how to spell that, but if they don't, <laughs> you can actually just go to westaffthechurch.com. So westaffthechurch.com, um, and you'll be able to contact any members of our team through that. Um, encourage church leaders to subscribe to our blog. Uh, we have a blog article that goes out every day to help resource church leaders and uh, we also have a podcast, so um, if you're not tired of my voice and you want to hear more of it, you can check out our podcast too. And then, how do people connect with you directly? Do you have a Twitter account? Do you actually are you on the Twitterverse? I am on the Twitterverse, so it's at Holly Hall Tate. Gotcha. So at Holly Hall Tate is my uh, Twitter. Love your feed, and uh, again, thank you so much for joining us uh, today and dropping some knowledge about Easter services. I really think this year is something that everyone here watching today um, has a chance to experiment and have some fun and do some impact at the same time. Thanks for joining us, and catch you next time here on the Church Butler Facebook page.